Everybody's got a story. And if you looked around this building, you knew half of the stories of the people in this building. You would probably wonder, number one, why we're in church. And number two, why God would grace us with his presence. But we are, and he does. And I don't care who you are or where you've come from. Jesus has an appointment with you tonight. You're not here by accident. In the beautiful, moving, living presence of God, you're not here by accident. The man that's been preaching this weekend is a dear friend, a great man of God. We throw that term around kind of casually today, man of God, woman of God. But this man is a man of God. He walks with Jesus. And what a story he has. I'm so glad God did the Pentecostal movement around the world a great favor and gave us a great blessing when he raised Lee Stone King from the dead. Coming up to 12 years ago. I'm so glad when God needed somebody to speak to the delegates at the United Nations. He laid his hand on this man and used him in such a powerful way. The reports are still coming in. And God's still working and it's amazing. I'm so grateful. But more than any of that, glad God loves us here in Fredericton enough that we got to have Brother Stone King with us this weekend. So, without any delay, we're going to bring Brother Stone King to the pulpit. All I would say to you is open your heart as wide as you can. Get ready for Jesus to talk to you. Listen very closely and you'll hear God speak to you. Put your feelers out, everything you've got spiritually. And God's going to touch somebody's life and change it forever today. Would you welcome the man of God by giving the God of this man a great praise? Would you lift up an incredible praise to Jesus tonight? Not a 30-second praise. Give Jesus great praise in this house tonight. Jesus. Thank you, Brother Woodward, for those most kind words. All that I am and all that I ever hope to be is because of this man called Jesus. What a difference he has made. In the Gospel of Luke, there's an interesting statement. It's in chapter 5, and it's verse 17. If you just look at that verse, it says, Jesus had performed the miraculous. He'd been among the people. But here in verse 17, it says, it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Say, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. That statement is repeated again 
in Luke chapter 6, in verse 19, it says here, And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. Not a half a dozen, not 12 or 13, but the scripture says, in his presence, he healed them all. The presence of the Lord was there to heal. I want to entitle this, Present to Heal. And there is an element of revelation in what I want to impart to you here tonight. So would you lift your hands, your voices in your hearts and pray that God will be able to do exactly with you what he wants to do. And just, again, let your voice out. The worship is wonderful. You people are wonderful. Jesus is most wonderful, extraordinaire. So tonight, O oh Lord Jesus, that you, O oh God, will stretch forth your hand. Help us to hear your voice. Lift us into the realm of revelation and understanding. O oh, master of the universe, open our minds and hearts. Heal, cause all manner of disease to disappear from people's bodies here tonight. Let the working of miracles, O oh God, occur in this audience here tonight. Anoint us both to hear and to speak. The gifts of healing, O oh God, be present among us here tonight to heal every disease, all manner of sickness. We give you praise, glory, and honor. We ask these things in your glorious and wonderful name, even the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone shouted, Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. You may be seated. Would you like to clap one more time just to settle ourselves and lift our voice again in the name of Jesus. We will clap for you, Jesus. We will lift our voice to you, Jesus. We will shout to you, Lord Jesus, because you are worthy of our praise. So all together, everyone in one mind and one accord, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah, Jesus. Through the years, I've seen a lot of things. And one of the most outstanding things when I first came into this was that I met Billy Cole. Billy Cole, in his lifetime, saw over one million people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Billy Cole would stand before masses of people and speak the word of faith in Ethiopia, Papua New Guinea, various places. And thousands would receive the Holy Ghost. And one, in fact, at one point, he called me and he said, Lee, this was the big one. He said, today in Ethiopia, he said, 185,000 people received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so as I pondered these things, and I've seen those things happen, and I've seen a lot of uh, people receive the Holy Ghost in my own ministry, but I began to work with something. I thought, God, if Billy Cole and others can speak the word of faith and thousands can receive the Holy Ghost, why can't I speak the word of faith for the miracles of healing and thousands be healed in one service. So I began. I thought, I'll try it. I have nothing to lose, everything to gain. Mm. But along the path of my journey with this Jesus, something happened that caused me to view my approach to God totally different. It changed my concept of how God heals. It changed my awareness of God. And it happened, as most things do, just in the course of life and living for God. If you just walk with God and do the will of God in your life, 
I promise you, you'll see things other people don't see. You'll get involved with things that other people are not involved with. It happened for me like that. When I first began pastoring out of Bible College in upstate New York, we did everything we could to reach the community. We had tent revivals. We canvassed. We did all kinds of things. And um, we, we're, we're a home missionary church. We didn't have a lot of money. And uh, so we had to make do with what we had. And we had an old tent, and it was somewhat dilapidated. There were rips in it, and we couldn't afford anything more. So we pitched it in a neighborhood. And in that neighborhood, there were seven Roman Catholic churches in that neighborhood. And priests came, and people came. It was amazing. And they, we didn't have nice carpet like this. It was sawdust that they gave us from the lumber yard. And we built the platform. And here was the tent, and I was preaching away for several nights in this tent revival. A number of people came. There was one woman who came. She was a Roman Catholic. And um, she became, she was converted under my ministry, and she became a prophetess under my ministry. She was powerfully used by God. But on this first time I saw her, she had come down here in the, in the altar service, and she was standing worshiping in that sawdust, and I was praying with a number of people. But then she disappeared. I didn't see her. Well, she had walked over here up against the wall of the tent, and she was standing here. Well, as I said, the, the tent was old, and it was dilapidated. There was a big rip in this tent, and she was standing near that rip. Well, she had her hands raised, and she was worshiping God, and she was crying, and I was praying with someone else. I, I turned my back on her, and after several minutes, I looked back, and she was gone. I didn't know where she had gone, and I walked over there, and what had happened is the Holy Ghost had fallen on her. She fell through the rip in the tent and was outside lying in the grass. Her toe of her shoe was sticking through the rip, and I climbed through the rip, and here she's speaking with tongues, just shaking and trembling in the grass. She sang in tongues for three days and couldn't stop. She was converted. So her life became just filled with wonderful things. One day, several months later, she called me and she said, Brother Stone King, I have a friend. She's in the hospital. And she said, she's dying with cancer. She said, she's been a lifelong friend of mine in the Catholic Church, and she loves God. Would you go to the hospital and pray for her? I said, Nell, of course I'll go. You know I will go. So I went right away. And um, when I went into the room, she had a private room. This lady was lying there. She was an older lady. And um, I'll never forget it. Her neck and her arms and her hands were just dark purple, reddish, and they look bruised and beaten, just purple, red, just inflamed type thing. And uh, I, I was shocked, actually. But in my way of doing things, I went over to the bed, and I knelt down beside her on my knees at the side of that bed. I took her hand in mine, and I looked very closely at the flesh, and I said, Mother, what, what has happened to you? And she called me Dear Reverend. She said, Dear Reverend, she said, they put me in this room, and she said they gave me a cobalt treatment. She said they put you on this table, and they slant the table. She said there's a button on the wall, and she said they go and push that button. She said you don't feel anything. You don't feel anything. You don't feel anything. She said, but when they push that button, the rays, that cobalt, it's, it goes through your body, and it, it's, as it slides through the body and goes through the body, it's supposed to burn out the cancer cells. She said, they got my table slanted wrong, and the rays did not go through my body. My body is cooked. I didn't know what to do with that. So I just prayed for her and touched her, and God marvelously, marvelously worked with her and healed her. It was tremendous. But the thing I learned from that was this. She said, you don't feel anything. And then I began to realize something. People, when you walk through the doors of this sanctuary or your sanctuary, respectively, wherever you come from, 
you have just walked into the most powerful radiation room on planet Earth. And you don't have to feel anything. When you walk in the rays of the Holy Ghost, right there where you are seated, right there where you are standing, can shine through your clothes and burn out cancer cells just like that. Tumors can disappear. Legs can grow. Eyes can see. Ears can hear. The lame will walk. The blind will see. Clap your hands and rejoice in that simple understanding, this truth. And so through the years, I've kept working with it. And God in the last year or two has kept speaking to me. And he keeps telling me in a service, just in the middle of a service, he will say something to me like, there are many people here tonight because they have come into my sanctuary, because they have lifted their hands and worshiped me, because they have sung praises to me. Diseases have disappeared from their bodies that would not have surfaced for another six months or a year, but because they came to my house and worshiped me, they walked out of here totally, totally healed. People, you have no idea what's happening when you come through those doors and begin to worship among us. You have no idea what's got a hold of you. You have no idea what's about to happen for you. The rays of the Holy Ghost can shine through your clothes right there where you are. And no matter what you walked in here with, you can walk out free, totally healed, because the Spirit of the Lord, every time we come to the house of God, the Spirit of the Lord is present to heal he is present to heal. He is present to heal. He is present to heal. Shout to him for a moment. Jesus, I worship you. Oh. I have begun to tell some things I've never told before. I, I fail to tell it because you need to hear it. Because the torch is passing to a younger generation, there's an anointing falling upon young people among us in apostolic Christianity. And if you understand these things, you can walk into it and you can become a part of it. There's no doubt about it. But in some places, when it's announced that I'm coming, people will be healed before I ever get there. Faith begins to rise and people will begin to get healed before I ever get into the city. People will begin to get the Holy Ghost. In this hour, John the Baptist never went to Jerusalem. Jerusalem came to John the Baptist. God is raising up John the Baptist ministries in this hour. Your pastor here is one of them. He is going all over the place and crowds are coming to him because there is something happening among us now that's never, ever happened before. People, we're in the throes of the greatest move of God the world has ever known and it's intensifying day by day by day by day and nothing's going to be able to stop it. There is no ism, there is no schism, there is nothing going to stop what God is doing. We're in the end of this thing. It's time to shout the praises of God, to rejoice in the move of God. I don't care what the news says. I don't care what anybody is doing. God is on the move. He's come down into the earth, and he's going to have this thing the way he wants it. I don't know about you, but I'm on his side. I'm on his side. I'm on his side. I want to walk in that realm. I want to be there. If that is true of you, tell God in your way right now, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of what you're doing. Lord, Jesus, it's not because I am who I am. It's because he is who he is. But if we lift him up, he will perform the miraculous among us. I was asked in 2004, I think it was, to preach the general conference what they called Night of Miracles. I think it was in Louisville, Kentucky. And so I told them that I would do it, and I went. There were, there were so many miracles that happened that night. In fact, I got word later there were over 200 notable miracles that took place in that service because I preached to them what I felt to preach, 
And then I spoke the word of faith. And the word of faith went over that whole congregation. There were thousands of people there. And people were healed of all kinds of diseases. There were 58 notable miracles that they were supposed to write these miracles down and bring them to the platform. But the, the crowd was so big that so many people that were healed couldn't get their writings up there. But at the end of the service that night, I was one of the last to leave there, the service. The, there were hearing aids all over that table up there. There were, there were prescriptions thrown on the floor. There were all kinds of things that happened. But in the end result, there were way over 200 notable miracles that took place right before their eyes. One of our preachers had cancer on his throat. The cancer was sticking out the size of a golf ball in the audience because the word of faith was spoken. Jesus walked up to him, and people watched. That cancer disappeared right before their eyes. The skin closed over and became normal just like the other side. People were screaming. They were shouting. They were dancing. And I, I happened to get off the platform and get into the crowd. That preacher came and grabbed me and lifted me off the floor. He was sobbing and crying. One pastor from Louisville told me, he called me later. He said, Brother Strong King, I brought five or six chronic mir people that were in terrible shape, crippled. He said, every one of them was healed by the presence of Jesus that was in that place. And again, it's not who I am. Because I am who I am. It's because Jesus is who he is. But we've got to be open to this. You've got to understand that when Jesus walks in, scrap your thinking or whatever you're planning. Follow along in the spirit. Get a hold of him. If you see someone over here standing and crying and shaking and trembling, don't just stand there and watch them. Go over there and get a hold of them. Help them to get what they're reaching for. The devil has watched us worship and do what we do for nearly 2,000 years. He's adjusted to that, but there's one thing he's not adjusted to. You can stand here forever and raise your hands and cry and pray for this man over here. He doesn't worry about that, but the moment you stop praying and lifting your hands and begin to walk toward that man and reach your hands toward him, the devil begins to have a nervous breakdown because he believes the Bible even more than we do. He knows that these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And when you begin to move towards someone, there's nothing he can do to stop it. There's a power inside of you. You take a hold of someone in Jesus' name and something happens, something happens, something takes place. Tap again and just let your voice out. Jesus, I worship you. And at this point in my life in ministry, I want to impart everything I know about this. I want everyone to get a hold of this and, and do it. I mean, because it's not about me. It's about God. It's about what God is doing in the earth. Brother T.W. Barnes called me a couple of years before he passed away, and uh, he we exchanged greetings, and then he said to me, he said, boy, God is protecting you. I said, what do you mean? He said, I get phone calls here all the time from people who have just been in audiences where you've been preaching, and he said, they've been healed of cancer. He said, if it was noised abroad, all the things that really happen in your meetings he said, I'm concerned that a jealousy would rise against you that might make it difficult for you to operate. He said, so God is doing these things inconspicuously among the people while you are preaching. He's protecting you. So that's all right with me. I don't need the credit anyhow. I just want to know that it's happening, and I can feel it. Classic example. I was in a meeting, a women's conference, 7,000. Sister Tinney wanted me to come. They were in power at that time in Louisiana. She wanted me to come and, and transmit faith to this women's conference and preach faith. So I did. One night, there was a woman up in the balcony in, back there. She'd had this kneecap removed from her knee. And she was up there. I didn't know she was there. There's 7,000 people here. But I preached faith and spoke the word of faith and imparted that to the people. God moved in that place. I knew 
I knew there were miracles taking place, but I didn't know exactly what kind of miracles. I just knew they were happening because I could feel it. A couple of months later, I was in that general area preaching for another pastor. The pastor lets me out the first night in front of the church door. I step out of the car, stand up, and some woman from the parking lot screams, Brother Stone King, she was yelling, and she came running across that parking lot on the highest of high heel shoes. Ladies, I don't know how you walk in those things, let alone run in them. She was running toward me, and she said, oh, Brother Stone King, she got to me, she said, look, well, that means nothing to me. I don't know what, what you mean, look. What I found out when she settled down, she said, while I was in the balcony, she said, God walked up to me and he replaced that kneecap. And she said, I can stand, I can walk. She said, look, now it means something to me and I can dance and I can shout with her. People, there are things that are happening among us like we've never known before. There are miracles here tonight. There were miracles here this morning. There were miracles here last night. That's worth shouting about. That's worth clapping about. That's worth rejoicing about. Jesus is in this house. He's alive and well. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a savior. He's a rescuer. Ah! One of the most interesting things is in Madisonville, Kentucky, I've preached there for several years, and there have been notable miracles there through the years. This one year I was there, it's probably been six, seven years ago now, they had this woman in a wheelchair over here. Her son was Jew, they were Jewish. He had come to the church and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, He'd been baptized in Jesus' name. He talked his mother into coming to this meeting one night. So here was this fine Jewish lady seated in this wheelchair. She'd had bone surgery on both knees, and the bones had been removed from both of her knees. She was not, no longer able to walk. She was no longer able to stand. That was the prognosis, the diagnosis. She would be confined to a wheelchair for the rest of her life. In that service, faith rose among the people. I watched some of those women, I'm in the pulpit, but some of those women gathered around her and they began to pray for her in their wheelchair. And they really prayed. It was wonderful. And then they stopped praying and they sort of backed off. All of a sudden, with no one around her or touching her, the gift of faith was in that place. That woman took her hands and grabbed the arms of that wheelchair and pulled herself up and stood up. The people that had brought her in there, wheeled her in there, were staring because she's not supposed to be able to stand. And then she just starts walking across the front of the entire auditorium and the altar. She walked all the way across. She turned around and she walked all the way back. At this point, people, it began to dawn on them. She is, has had a miracle. God has healed her. It was amazing. At the end of the service, she walked out of there without the wheelchair, no support or help, across the parking lot, down a long set of stairs into a fellowship hall and walked from table to table that night telling us how God had healed her. It was amazing. But this is the most amazing thing. She went home without the wheelchair, and about a week later, she went back to see the doctor, and she walked in his office, and he, he cried out, what are you doing? She said, walking. <laughs> he said, you're not supposed to be able to walk. You can't walk. She said, I'm walking. I've been to a church, and they prayed for me for healing, and I've received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and I've been baptized in Jesus' name, and I'm healed. Let me take x-rays. So he did. They always want to take x-rays. He came back in a few minutes, and he said, who was the surgeon that did this bone replacement surgery for you? She said, I didn't have bone replacement surgery. He said, yes, you did. 
Every place where the bones I took out, they've been replaced and they show up snow white on the x-ray. Whoever the surgeon was, he's a master surgeon. So I've decided tonight to tell you some things that I have seen. It's amazing what God is doing. And the reason I want to do this for you here is because I know that this congregation, you people here in this part of Canada, this thing is coming in upon you. It's trying to get into all of your churches. It's trying to move. The Holy Ghost is pulling at us to get involved with the supernatural into the miraculous. And that thing is in the audience. It's in this air. It's in this city. When I entered this city, I entered this city in the name of Jesus Christ. And I said, God, I want you to do exactly here everything you want to do. And he's doing it. God is doing it for you. Jesus is doing it for you. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Psalm 105 verse 1 says, make known his deeds among the people. In other words, tell what God has done. Tell what God has done. There was a man in the Louisiana camp meeting, and I preached that camp meeting a number of times through the years. This man was on two shots of insulin every day. The power of God hit him. They brought him to me. The power of God hit him, and he declared he was healed. He was healed. I mean, he was totally healed. The sugar diabetes totally disappeared. Evidently, God gave him a whole new pancreas. Everything was together. Another man heard about this, and he came running, and he had this sugar diabetes situation, and it was in bad shape. And when I prayed for him, he shouted, I am healed. He went out after that service to a restaurant. He didn't order a piece of cake, ladies and gentlemen. He ordered the whole cake, and he ate the whole cake. I don't recommend that, but he did it, and there was no complication. I mean, if you're healed, you're healed. If God has done it, it's done it. He has done it. I was in Brother Kershaw's church years ago, and uh, there was a full audience there. And I noticed this one woman came in with a younger woman, and I assumed that the younger woman was her daughter. And they sat over here back, about halfway back. But they didn't move. And we had a great service, and the altar service was great, and I think the people received the Holy Ghost, whatever. But I looked back, and this woman and this young woman were still seated there. So I went back. I had to climb over a few pews to get to them because there were still people around. When I got to the pew just in front of them, I looked down at this woman and got down. I looked over at her, and I said, I said, I said woman, lady, are you afraid? I said, is something wrong? She said, I, I'm afraid, Reverend. I'm afraid. I said, why are you afraid? She said, because my daughter was born with one leg shorter than the other one. And she said, while you were preaching, I looked down, and the short leg was growing, and I watched it grow to exactly the same length as the other leg, and it stopped. Mm. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I was it because of the times when here, a preacher, Brother Shepherd, walked by me, and he just walked by me on the platform, went about 10 steps and screamed and came back and grabbed me. He said, Brother Stone King, while I walk, when I walked by you, this short leg I was born with, it grew long as the other one. He said, something's happened. 
he had to learn how to walk all over again because he had favored that short leg and he had learned how to compensate. But now it was the same length as the other one. He had to learn how to walk all over again. People, I don't know what other people are thinking or preachers, but this is the only kind of Jesus I'm going to preach. This is the only kind of Jesus I'm going to present because this is the real Jesus. This is the real thing. This is the Jesus that can do anything, everything, and all things. If you really believe that, just let your voice out for a moment and just cry out to the Lord because something, something is moving upon you right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh. I was in Brother Kilgore's church when he was still pastoring on the platform beside him. And I knew that there was a woman right here in the front that was, this was Sunday evening. I knew she was facing brain surgery on Monday morning. There was a tumor in the brain and she was in very bad shape. And uh, they, had, they had told me about her. And, and I only do what I feel to do. But on the platform, in the middle of the service, I felt to leave the platform, walk down the steps, and crawl over the pews and pray for her. So I did that. And they were accustomed to how I operate, so they just carried right on with the service. I crawled over that pew and laid hands on her head and prayed for her in Jesus' name. And when I let go, the thing that I know... I could feel it go from me. And I walked back out the, up on the platform. Brother Kilgo was crying. He said, she was healed, wasn't she? I said, yes, Brother Kilgo, she was. When she went to the doctor the next morning, they could not find the brain tumor. They spent all, the whole day trying to find that brain tumor and could not find it. Jesus had totally healed her. <laughs> totally, totally healed her. I've told this a number of times, but the medical society at this point, they're not sure what to do with me. They don't really know what to do with me. In fact, I was talking to one of the doctors just recently and uh, because I wanted some information. And um, he, he's amazing. He's brilliant. But when I first got back, went to the hospital after being raised from the dead, I asked him, I said to him, I said, Dr. Weiner, I want to talk to you privately for a moment. He said, all right. So we walked into a room, and I closed the door. And he backed up against the wall, and he pulled his arms like this. Well, I walked up to him and took a hold of his arms, and I said, Dr. Weiner, if I can ever do anything to help you in my line of work, I'll do anything in my power to help you. He started crying. He said, now, Reverend, I can't get emotional. I can't get emotional. And I thought, it's too late, sir. You're already emotional. And he, he didn't know what to do with it. But he knows. I've been praying for his son, who's a diabetic. I just checked. He said, my son is doing absolutely tremendous. He said, Brother Stone King, he's doing absolutely tremendous. People, this Jesus, this power that's in us is trying to get out of us and move like never before in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, something wants to become born here tonight that has never happened in this particular spectrum or in this particular fullness. How many of you want this kind of a miraculous church? I know there have been healings here. I know there have been great deliverances. I know many have received the Holy Ghost, and you're in great revival. But the Holy Ghost wants to lift you to a higher level of operation. And he's going to use you, those of you in these pews, to get out of those pews, to cross the aisle, to begin to lay hands on people, to speak to people, to become bold with your power. Because it's not just in the hands of Brother Woodward. 
and Brother Jack. It's not just in their hands. The anointing is upon you. There's an anointing upon this audience. It's not the shepherd that gives birth to the sheep. It's the sheep that give birth to the, to the lambs. There's something on you here. There's something on you. It's been here every time I've come, but there's something different this year. Something different is upon you. Something is reaching for you. The Holy Ghost is reaching for you as an individual. There are visiting preachers and ministers here tonight and congregations. How many of you want to get involved just beyond the traditional Pentecostal situation? You want to get involved in the real apostolic flow of the Spirit. It's in the air tonight. It's in this place here tonight. There's an anointing. There's a canopy of coming down upon us. There's like a mantle again tonight falling upon us. If that thing is desirous to you, if you want that mantle upon you, and you're a man of God, a woman of God, you're a saint in the church and you want that, I want you to stand to your feet and just lift your hands and just claim it. Don't just worship, but claim it. Claim it for yourself in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. There are people in the balcony. I can feel it going to you. I can feel it going to you. I can feel it going to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You young people here tonight, God doesn't, God doesn't deal with your youth. He deals with your anointing. There's an anointing upon you young people over here. Young people, just shout to the Lord for a moment. Let your voice out because this, this anointing, this authority is coming upon you. It's upon you tonight. It's falling upon you. The takaraka, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, son, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. O taka shataka, andaha taka shataya, andaha taka shataka shatakata, uyaha taka re shataya varaka, andoha taka shataya taka shataya. Faith is rising in your heart. Faith is rising in your very soul. That's it. Let your voice out. There are several people here tonight. You want to do something you've never done before. Do it. Don't be afraid in the name of Jesus. I wonder what would happen if every individual here, no matter who you are, would raise both hands and just begin to worship God from the deep of your heart. Something, something will continue to become born inside of you. Something is trying to get through to us as a people. The spirit of utterance is in this house. The spirit of utterance is in this house. The prophetic is here tonight. You can feel the gifts of the Spirit. You can feel the working of miracles. There are people being healed right there where you're standing because of the tremendous power of the radiation of the Holy Ghost shining 
through the very fiber of your clothes into your body in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Faith is the hand of the soul that reaches out and never returns empty. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. By the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus. That's it, that's it, that's it. There may be some of you, you want to make your way to this altar of prayer. You want to claim what you have felt here tonight. You want to claim it. You want to possess it. I want you to possess it. I want you to possess it in the name of Jesus. In fact, I would be thrilled and God would be thrilled if tonight in this place, you would just throw your voice in the air and you would just throw your hands in the air and say, God, I possess this. I possess it. I claim it. For myself in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 Jesus! Hallelujah! Jesus! Hallelujah! Jesus! Hallelujah! Jesus! Hallelujah! Jesus! Hallelujah, Jesus. If you cannot get to this altar, if you cannot get to this altar, at least reach over to the person next to you where you're standing. Get a hold of their hand. And as a believer, let the power of the Holy Ghost inside of you be transmitted. You can command in Jesus' name. You can command in Jesus' name. Jesus, I pray right now, I release the working of miracles among these people. Heal all manner of disease in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I transmit the gift of faith to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. That's it, that's it. There's healing on you right here. There's healing, there's healing on you right there in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that's it, that's it, man, that's it. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. 